Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Wednesday, April 10th, and then we'll see how things look for Thursday, April 11th. Yeah, CPI came in hot. The market didn't like that. It's thrown the whole scenario into question that is the Fed actually done raising rates? I saw a couple of headlines that said the Fed, the Fed may actually have to come in and raise rates if we continue to see stronger than expected economic reports, especially as they apply to inflation. The market didn't like that. It gapped lower. We have now turned negative in the short term. We're showing weakness in the intermediate term. You could make a case that we're already negative, but it, we're kind of more shifting there. We're still positive in the long term. We'll be watching support levels. We have some support levels to keep an eye on right now. If we see further weakness, we'll be watching other support levels. But all in all, it was not a positive day. The idea that the Fed would be able to stop raising rates and possibly cut rates at the beginning of the year, it was six, seven rate cuts. Then it got whittled down to three. Now it's looking at best, maybe two, and there's even some speculation that there won't be any. And if we do see these really strong reports, they may actually have to come in and raise rates. Well, that scenario is pretty much gone right now, or at least in limbo. And we're going back to this idea where if good news comes out, that's taken as bad news because it will be seen as inflationary. If Reports come out that are weak and weaker than expected. That will be taken as good news, and that may give the market some support. And now we're going back to what we went through mostly in 2023. We keep an eye on growth versus value. Even though both were down, growth outperformed value. The small caps just got hammered. And so we'll be watching other things like commodities. We're watching the dollar. And if we see strength in those areas, that could continue to pressure stocks. So let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we had a gap lower open below S1. Because we saw the pretty wide spread between the high and the low in Tuesday's session, that made the pivot points for Wednesday <clears throat> kind of further apart. But we came in below S1 at 51.72. That was near last week's low when we had that downward move. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I was watching this video the other night, and this guy had just perfect narration on the video, and people accuse him of being AI. Yeah, I get that all the time, too, with all the coughing and clearing of throats and tumbling over my words that I have to do. Anyway, we came in right around last week's low, and then prices bounced above S1. So there was kind of a counter trend move. This could have been some folks buying into weakness. This could have also been some folks short covering. They hit their profit targets and decided to get out. But then we fell back below S1. We chopped sideways. We didn't see a real sustained downward move after that. We never got down to R2 at 5134. So we're still above that. But we did end up closing below S1. We were down 0.95%. So, so still less than a percent move. And volume is still below average. So those are some kind of positive things. Not a huge move to the downside, not a massive sell-off with volume not really picking up. We are more negative in the short term. Intermediate term is mixed to shifting more negative. You And like I said, you could even make more of a case of looking negative where we're still positive in the long term. Inflation and interest rates. Interest rates went up. That's pressuring stocks. It's Interest rates are going up because CPI came in hot and inflation is starting to concern some folks now where it thought that it had been under control. And then we have all the different geopolitical events which could feed into the market. Some comments. CPI did come in hot. It was more of a broad-based decline, but growth held up better than value. They were both down, but growth did wasn't down as much. And the mega caps, actually, we saw a few of them actually going up in Wednesday's session. Oil went up. It's at 86.24. That's because of the geopolitical tensions. The context is making it more negative for the market. And we're already extreme negative or oversold on a short-term basis with our usual suspects here. The Stoke RSI, the Williams Percent R, the CCI 14, 
the stochastics, yep, yeah, we're there already. And the, there's one area of the PMO studies that we're already looking extreme, but we're still extreme positive when we look at the 150 and 200 period moving averages. The exponential moving average that was on the list yesterday, that's dropped off. But the simple moving averages, because they move slower, they still remain on the list. The current scenario, they're still going with the idea that the Fed is likely done raising rates. That's somewhat in question going forward from here. But rate cuts earlier in 2024 are now in doubt. And we'll just watch this day in and day out to see if there's more of a shift in this. The dollar was up and interest rates were up. We're at 4.56% with the 10-year yield. The yield curves that we follow are still inverted. Sentiment is now shifted down to neutral. We had been positive where we came in at 61, but we've been coming down. And the latest reading is 54. And we're still not trending but it could look like we're starting to develop a trend and that trend looks right now to be negative. The red line is still on top. So we would default to negative if you have any kind of directional bias. The ADX is still weakening for right now and it's below 20, both in the short and intermediate term, but they're starting to turn back up. Our bias is negative with the down day. And for right now, I'm keeping our momentum at mixed to negative. If we see more follow through with this and not a lot of buying coming in on shorter term weakness, this may switch over to more negative when we take the last two, three, four, five days together. We did get the weekly MBA mortgage applications index. It was up 0.1% or last week it was down 0.6%. Just want to keep an eye on that. And this is likely to fall if interest rates continue to go up. CPI came in at 0.4%. They expected 0.3%. The headline number freaked folks out. Last time it did come in at 0.4%. The core, this is where we measure inflation. It also came in higher than expected at 0.4%. They expected 0.3%. Last time it was at 0.4%. Wholesale inventories, not a major economic report, but something we still want to keep an eye on. And I'll explain that when I get to the chart. It was up half a percent. They expected it to be up half a percent, and it was up from the 0.3% that we saw last time. Here is the mortgage applications, where they were up just slightly after we had been seeing some declines, but we saw lesser declines over the last few weeks. Here's the CPI on a year-over-year -year basis. When we look at the total, it's now starting to turn back up. I also have our chart that I'll show later on, where the core is also starting to turn back up, and that is really causing some concern for the markets. You look at the services and commodities year over year, where the services are starting to turn back up, because that's mostly what the U.S. economy is based on, but they take out energy for this one. And then the core commodities, these are things that you buy and consume and make products out of, those continue to decline. Here's our chart, just showing the year over year change, where we are starting to go back up. On a month-over-month -month rate of change, we're still declining, but it, since it came in less than ex or greater than expected, that's causing some concern. Here's the core CPI, where it's leveling off after it had been declining, and it's also leveling off when we look at the month-over-month. -month. And we look at wholesale inventories. And the reason I bring this up is, in a real general sense, when a company makes products and those products stay in the company, they're on the shelves, those are inventories. The idea is when you make a product, you want it to go out the door and be delivered. So you don't want to have a lot of inventories. And this is a little bit of a concern that we've seen a real move up in the inventories. Companies are making the products, but they're not necessarily being delivered. Now, there's a ton of variables that could go into that. We're just looking at this in a general sense. Here's some Isabel net charts. Now, keep in mind that all of these charts came out before CPI was released. This is put out by Real Investment Advice where they're just showing the change in liquidity. This is a thing called the liquidity index. That's the red line. And this is the Fed putting money into the system. And when they're doing that, that gives really good support to stocks. It's starting to go back up after it had been declining. Not sure if that's really gonna have an impact as we're working through the current situation. Then we look at a weekly chart of the S&P just to give you a little bit different perspective, we are breaking out after seeing this cup and handle formation. We are coming down. We're below 5,200 now, but there's still upward projections. 
And this is longer term. And for right now, this is still looking positive. And then we look at the 10-year yield, which is up even more than where it was on this chart. This is still showing how interest rates have been going back up. We also show some momentum here with these indicators further at the bottom. And then this is the probability of a recession, and it's calculated by looking at the different yield curves. It had been coming down. It Well, first it was going up in the forecast, and then it started to come down. Not sure where it's going to go from here. It likely will go back up. There's a little bit more concern about these things right now. And then this also came up beforehand. These are the different areas that make up CPI and how much of an impact that they have where energy's at the top and food, you know, kind of the things that you need to have. And see, they slice out these top two areas to get more of the core rate. And it has been declining, but they're forecasting it to continue to decline. But this could start to change now as we're seeing new realities and then looking at the core CPI actual in the forecast, this was a forecast at the time this chart was actually posted where it's going to be higher than what the forecast was. And that's causing concern in the markets. Then uh, Sentiment Trader came out with something, and this is a little bit more positive. This was another area that we've been watching, thinking that, okay, it's all right for commodities to go up in a non-flationary kind of way if interest rates and inflation are under control. And that's what we're seeing right here. It says over the past six weeks, the spot commodity, that means the cash price, what they are right now, not futures, not looking down the road at what they think prices will be at some point in the future, hence the name futures. It's been going up. This shift um, bodes well for commodities and stocks. Will that come into check now? Is that going to change? We were seeing the CRB index starting to turn up and it was shifting over. We were seeing small caps starting to do a little bit better, even though they have a long ways to go. Well, with what's happening right now, commodities going up could be more inflationary rather than growth. And small caps, which have to borrow a lot of money, they're probably going to be under pressure if we're in a more inflationary environment. And that could pressure that index as well. Then we're keeping an eye on the different uh, cycles here. We came up here into the 10th. We actually went down a little bit early. If the cycle here sticks to what has been happening, we should see some declines going into about the 24th of April. Again, I don't know if there's anything behind us on a long-term basis. It's kind of sticking to what we've been seeing lately. So I keep following this chart, but there hasn't been an update in over a week. And here we are. We've got the perma bears. They're just all excited right now. I ran across this graphic and thought, okay. And they're sure that this is the beginning of the end of the world that they've been predicting for 25 years. Or as long as I've been in the markets, you got the perma bears. But they had a good day on Wednesday and they are living it up. Also, do you want to know why Google's been going up? Well, look at this. We're done selling Alphabet for the trust, says Jim Cramer. He was selling. And of course, I think the guy's a rodeo clown. And you should only watch him for entertainment. If you even waste your time watching him at all, people that listen to him, I think they deserve to lose their money. And his track record is terrible. Look at the charts. Learn how to do technical analysis. Come up with your own conclusions. Why this guy is so popular, I have no idea. I have nothing wrong with him personally. He's probably a nice guy. I just think... He's a clown as far as what he's trying to do is more entertainment rather than actual sound advice. But he was selling as Google was going up. Could that put some pressure on things now that he says he's done selling? Hmm. Okay, let's go look at the chart. We gapped lower down below S1, tried to come back up. We saw a bit of a counter trend move, not even close to filling the gap unless you want to take it up to some of the previous day's range. Then we fell back below S1, chopped around, never made it down to S2, and then just kind of drifted off sideways, ended up closing down below S1. Here's our intraday chart. Everything was looking pretty good. The futures were fairly positive, and it looked like, okay, we're going to get in some long positions before the market opens because we're sure that this report is going to be bullish. 
Well, those folks had to get out really fast. And we saw the futures just drop like a rock. That carried over into the cash session. We're not seeing much of a change in the initial overnight session right now because we have PPI coming out on Thursday. Not as influential, but still a very important report. Here's where we see growth, the blue line. It was down, but down less than value. Value just got hammered. And we can see that on an intraday basis because this was the environment that it looked like, okay, maybe growth and value could do better at the same time. Can't we all get along kind of a thing? Well, no, now we're going back more to a growth versus value, it appears, type of scenario. Here's the intraday chart of growth versus value where, <clears throat> even though it was down, was up when you compare it to value on an intraday basis. So here's our end of day chart. Growth was down, but value a lot more. Mid caps, growth was down, value a lot more. Small caps, growth was down, value a lot more. These were the areas that folks were trying to get into thinking if we're seeing an economic shift, it might be better to get into some of these value areas. That is in question right now. So we saw a little bit of a turn up with our small cap growth to value ratio, a bit of a turn up with the mid cap growth to value ratio, and a bit of a turn up here with the S&P growth to value ratio. Now, not enough to really say that things are shifting. We want to watch this day in and day out to see if this continues. We did decline with discretionary versus staples. That still is not really acting all that well right now. Large cap growth, even though it did decline, is still above this moving average. And this is a 50 period moving average. If we drop below that, that would turn it more intermediate term negative. But all the moving averages continue to go up. So sometimes it helps to step back and look at a bigger picture of things to try to get the context of what's happening. Then we look at the Russell 1000. Those are large cap stocks. That's kind of the equivalent to the S&P 500. And then compared to the small caps, where this really shot up. It's not really breaking out, but it was up one and a half percent. Again, everything was down, but small caps really got hit. Here's our trend. We're starting to turn up. We're just a little bit of below 20. So we're in a non-trending environment. If we go above the moving average and turn back above 20, that would be a trending environment. And for right now, the red line's on top. So we would default to, to negative. We're seeing a little bit more of a turn up, but still not a trend yet with the short term ADX still below the moving average. The red line is also on top. We still are below average with volume that could be taken as positive to have CPI come out, have a down day. But we were still below average with volume, rather encouraging, possibly sentiment. We did get an update here. It's still giving us a high reading. This is a few days old now. We're still getting a reading up over four, but it had been up close to four and a half. So this is dropping off, showing that there's extreme sentiment, according to the Investors Intelligence Survey. The ulcer index is still coming back to life a little bit, but it's not quite above the moving average yet. But we went up with the VIX on the line chart and the bar chart, which is only stand to reason. This goes up when stocks go down. We're seeing a real pickup in volatility after we've been getting some really low readings for a long time with the volatility of the VIX, now it's starting to shoot up. When we were getting this low reading, we could classify that as a volatility squeeze. We're getting squeezed to the downside. It can't help but go up and possibly put pressure on the market. The momentum of the VIX is continuing to be positive as things have been under pressure. These are not updated. They're one day behind, where at least after Tuesday, we were going up with the equity put call ratio, and we're also going up with the five period. I kept waiting and waiting, and they haven't updated. It's probably safe to assume that this is still going up, which is negative for stocks. We saw not much of a change here with the volatility risk premium. It didn't go up. It actually ticked down just a little bit as there's more risk coming into the market. So if you sell options, you're probably likely to bring in more. If you're going to buy options, you're probably going to have to pay more. Then our advanced decline line studies, we came down with the advanced decline line based on price and volume, but not falling off a cliff necessarily. Now, if this continues to go down, that'll be more negative. But for right now, it's holding up fairly well. We saw a little bit of an expansion of the new lows, but we're really seeing a contraction of the new highs. And this indicator, it tops out where we're at. That's why we flatline up here. It can't go any higher than it is. 
this is rolling over with our five period and we still continue to decline with the 10 period. That's why I have the 10 period on here because there are times when we don't really get anything from the five period. This gives us more directional, a little longer term. We did drop below zero with the short term exponential moving average based on 19 periods. We're still above with the 39 exponential moving average. So that's turning more negative in the short term. Accumulation distribution. This is a little bit encouraging. We're right on the moving average. We didn't see this really decline. So at least the smart money, they're not in there doing a lot of selling yet, according to this. <clears throat> now, this indicator is also based on volume, and we saw below average volume day. So that could be playing into this as well. We declined with the chicken money flow, and this has been negatively diverging and then turned negative. Now it's showing a little bit more weakness, another smart money indicator. We actually went up with the chicken oscillator. Go figure. But we're still negative. We're still below zero. And we saw the cumulative NYSE advanced decline line really drop off. We're coming down, but not drastically so with our regular NYSE advanced decline line. We also declined here, but not falling off a cliff yet with our other advanced decline line for the NYSE. When we look at the NYSE common stock, yeah, we were down based on price and volume. Just a downward move to this point. Is this the beginning of something or is this going to get taken care of relatively soon? And we also declined with the advanced decline line on cumulative basis based on price for the S&P as well as volume. Not really a surprise here. This is something I wanted to show. This is the NYSE new highs minus the new lows. I usually show this in the weekly video. And when we're above zero, that's positive. And we still are when you look at the moving average. But we're starting to drop below zero for the first time. Really, earlier in 2024, we went below it for a while. We're starting to show some weakness here. Now, this is more of a broad market measure. We're also dropping down when we look at the S&P 500 new highs minus the new lows. We're still doing okay, even though we've been pulling back longer term. But this is starting to show some shorter term negativity that we haven't seen. With our advanced decline line studies, we did turn down with the uh, NYSE common stock, S&P mid caps, small caps are back down to the moving average. Here's our chart. We broke below this pivot point. That's negative, but we're still above the 50 period moving average. And then on the bottom, we did pick up with volume, but we were still below average. The Stoke RSI is now extreme negative. The Williams percent are just barely coming into being extreme negative. The CCI 14 is extreme negative. The CCI 20 is not quite there yet. We did fall below the 20 period moving average study. So that's meaning that we're, we're turning more negative in the short term now, and we're dropping below this mini rainbow with our other 20 period moving averages of the open high, low, close. That's also looking more negative. So now we're gonna be keeping an eye on the 50 period moving average. Are we gonna come all the way down to this level? The 50 period is at about 5,100 right now. The exponential is at 5,088. We'll see if we see more weakness, are we gonna be able to bounce up off of that? We're rolling over with our short-term double and triple exponential moving averages. And the green line is actually dropping a little bit below the blue line, which is strange because the blue line usually moves faster. But price is going down below and we're rolling over here. And we're going down with our 20, 50, and we're no longer extreme with the 200 period exponential moving average just based on the S&P itself. This had gone extreme positive after Tuesday, it's now back to not being extreme. We are more negative with the force index and not necessarily extreme. We're already extreme in the short, short-term stochastics. We're declining in the intermediate term as well as the long-term. And I like to explain this. This chart further subdivides the short-term time frame. So we have short, short-term, intermediate, short-term, and long, short-term. We're below the midpoint and in the minus one standard deviations channel, that's turning more negative. Intermediate term, we're declining and below the midpoint with a balance of power. This is kind of interesting. We switched over to a lighter shade of blue. This might redraw and turn more negative if we see more downside from here. We're dropping below the midpoint and we're coming down to the red line. So now instead of focusing on the highest high value, we need to start focusing on the lowest low value if this continues. 
The TTM squeeze, which has been trailing off lately, it's still positive, but it continues to decline. And here's our double and triple exponential moving average based on 50 periods. The red line's coming down and could cross below the blue line. That would mean that we're seeing some weakness intermediate term, but we haven't crossed yet, and price is below both. The Bollinger Bands, just showing how we're below the midpoint, and now we're below the midpoint here and declining, so that's turning more negative. Ease of movement has turned negative. We dropped below zero. Seeing nothing in the Arun, it's sleeping right now. We're going down with the S&P McClellan oscillator after we had shown some improvement. We're below zero, so this is negative. That means that we are declining with the summation index based on price and volume. We're also declining and below zero with the NYSE McClellan oscillator. So we're declining with the summation index for the NYSE based on price and volume. We turn down with the Swinland Trading Oscillator based on price and volume, and both are about or both are below zero. So that's more negative. And on a momentum basis, we are turning more negative with the PMO going down. The PMO based on price and volume also are declining. We're getting extreme already with the PMOs that are rising. Now, this could go further and this could last a while, but we're showing an extreme reading. We're declining with the buy signals. And after being extreme positive for a long time here, we are starting to come down with the PMOs that are above zero. We are now negative with the Elder's Impulse System for the S&P. We're still negative with the Parabolic SAR. Here's our slope oscillator, which continues to decline. The MACD is also declining. All of our oscillators are declining across the short, intermediate, and long-term time horizons. We dropped below the 20-period moving average, so now we're going to be focusing on the 50s. We're also declining with the bullish percent index. We're below 70 and declining. That is negative. We're also declining with the NYSE bullish percent index. We're still positive since we're above 50, but we are declining now. And we had crossed back above 50 with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index. Now we've crossed back below it. So that's turning more negative. We're below 50 and declining with the money flow index. We're below 50 and declining with the ultimate oscillator. We've crossed negative with the vortex. After seeing this negative divergence for quite a while, the red line is now crossing above the green line. We're still holding up okay with the RSI. We're just right at about the 50 level, just a little bit under 50, where the shorter term RSI is now dropping below 50. Now, if we stay down here for any length of time, that will shift the momentum over to negative. Since the early part of November, the momentum has been positive. We'll see how long this lasts. We're still positive with on balance volume, even though it did decline. If we drop below the moving average, that will turn things more negative. We're below 50 and declining with the stocks inside the S&P above their 20 period moving averages. So that's looking weaker. We're also declining, but still above 50 with those stocks above their 50 period moving average. So this is showing weakness, but has not turned negative yet. Coming down after showing good momentum with those stocks above their 100 period moving averages. And if this continues to fall, this longer term momentum that we've been hanging on to could be in doubt. We're also coming down showing some weakness of those stocks above their 200-day moving average. The copy curve continues to be negative. The Sean trend meter is declining. If we go into this kind of pepto bismol -y area here, that will be more neutral. Just want to bring up the FIB chart for right now. We did have the all-time high set recently coming down. We still have quite a ways to go to get the 38.2% retracement level. Just want to keep an eye on this. Our different charts looking more negative on a trend basis with the Heiken Ashi. That's turning negative with a black candle. We're turning down or we're negative and turning down even more with the Kigi chart. Lorenko, it's like, what? Something happened? Wake me up when it's over. And the three line break is looking more negative. Long term, we're still above this resistance level at 51.10 to 51.11. We want to watch that to see if this ends up providing support. We are declining, but still extreme with our 150 and 200 period moving averages. If we continue to decline, and it's still going to take a while, and it would take some pretty negative action to turn these from being extreme positive. So the longer term momentum for right now is still holding up. And we're looking negative across the board in the short term with the S&P, the mid caps, small caps, and the NASDAQ 100. We're still positive in the intermediate and long term. 
And stocks are negative in the short term. Bonds are still negative across the board based on price. Commodities are still negative in the long term. And the dollar is still showing some strength. Saw an awful lot of red here. The blue or green here, the dollar going above 105, that's actually negative for stocks. Canada, they're kind of doing their own thing right now. And the NASDAQ did see a little bit of a bounce only to give some of that up later on. But most of this was red. And we're watching to see if the equal weight and the S&P regular weighted index, this actually underperformed here a little bit. Is that going to be something that changes back now? So we saw this ratio actually going up, but we've been chopping sideways. If this continues to go up, that means that the mega caps will be outperforming the rest of the market, which is the environment that we had been dealing with. Are we going to be going back to that environment? The Dow did break below this S1 level and its 50-day moving average and is looking more negative. And we're also turning negative with the diamonds when looking at the Elder's Impulse system. We're still above the 50-period moving average with the NASDAQ, but we did drop below this pivot level. And we're right on the 50-period moving average when we look at the NASDAQ 100. Is this a support level that will hold? It held a week or so ago when we had that downturn. Will it hold this time or are we going to fall through it? That could turn things more negative if we close below the 50-day moving average. And we're turning negative with the QQQs when looking at the Elder's Impulse system. The momentum for the NASDAQ 100 is negative. And we're right at the 50-period moving average. We're above it for right now. Will this provide support or are we going to fall down below that? Small caps, yeah, they just got taken out and shot. They've been range bound, trying to show some signs of life only to give most of that back. We are negative with the Elder's Impulse System for the small caps. The Russell also turning more negative with the small caps, below 50 with the RSI, dropping below the 50 period moving average. And the momentum is negative, even though the longer term trend is still positive. The mid caps also saw some weakness, but are still above this S1 level and still above their 50-day moving average. But they've turned negative with the Elder's Impulse system for the mid-caps. Apple was down and is also in a downtrend. Tesla was down and is in a downtrend. NVIDIA was up, is one of the stronger stocks, but see how it's been trailing off lately and could be coming down to its 50-period moving average if we see more weakness. The FANG index is still pretty much chopping sideways and not really breaking up or down, at least yet. The financial sector was down, but still above its 50-day moving average. The dollar is showing some strength. It got back above 105, and that's pressuring stocks. Here's a longer-term look, look, where we broke out above this longer-term trend line, came back down to the trend line. Now we're breaking out above it. Oil was also up to 86.21. And be careful of this chart because sometimes there's at minimum a one-day delay. Here's a two-day delay. We get the S&P, fine, but we might get a one- or two-day delay when we look at the MC, MSC. I used to be an MCSE, or I still am, actually. So I have to. I have problems with this acronym. And um, it's actually hasn't been updated since the 9th. But it's showing that in the shorter term, the correlation is dropping off and weakening a bit with the longer term correlation. Bonds, look at how we spiked up with the 10-year yield. Yeah, you think the market reacted to CPI? And we really shot down with the price of the 10-year. But when you look at this, because growth was down less, we're seeing an improvement with the Qs to S&P. Still below a declining moving average, but this did turn up. Saw a little bit more of a decline with discretionary to the S&P and a little bit of an improvement with large cap growth versus large cap value. So saw a little bit of an improvement with the large caps, mid caps, and small caps. Look how that's turning up. But they're not breaking above their moving averages yet. This I haven't shown. I delegated it over to one of the weekly videos now because we were just pegged at the top for all of 2024. Well, we saw a little bit of a drop. Now we're dropping below. This is the 10-day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows. We're dropping below after being extreme for a long time now. Just want to be aware of that. That's longer term. And we're also looking a little more negative with our 19-day exponential moving average of the advanced decline ratio. And I showed the sister chart earlier on with the red and the blue lines. 
We dropped below zero based on price. We're also dropping below zero based on volume here. So that's turning things more negative. So what's our outlook for Thursday? Earnings season will begin typically on Friday with the banks reporting. Okay, the technicals are positive, but we're negative in the short term with the intermediate term just weakening for right now. We're going to get weekly jobless claims and PPI and then all the crazy things going on in the world. Watch out for something that's not on this list. And then we're going to have consumer sentiment come out on Friday. Also, as I said, earnings will be coming out for the banks. Here is the economic list. There's going to be a 30-year bond auction. Apparently, there was a 10-year note auction in Wednesday's event that was not taken very well. And that added some pressure to interest rates going up and stocks going down as well. Seasonally, we are neutral to positive with the Dow and S&P, where we're neutral to negative with the NASDAQ. And looking at the ninth trading day of the month, where we do see some weakness even during an election year. And this is more indicative of what we've been seeing now. This purple line, pink, purple, whatever you want to call it. This is starting to go back down, which is matching up when you look at the top first quarter during an election year and compare it with what's been going on. That's more realistic of what's been happening, where we had been following this black line, which we were deviating away from that big time. Not sure where we're at here on the Carson chart. Thursday is one of the more positive days. And then we're coming in here to the 11th or so. Do see some weakness until we deal with tax day. And then we were going up seasonally. Now we're starting to come back down when you compare it with election years versus non-election years. April is still one of the more positive months, and then it's the most positive month globally. And it tends to be positive no matter how you measure it. And we're up 11 out of 18 times, down 7 out of 18 times. We're up 71.6% of the time with an average return of 1.5%. And according to Tom Bally, April is bullish, where industrials tend to be weak, energy is hot. We're still in this area where we should be seeing some strength before we come into some weakness, and then some strength later on in the month. Warning signs, equity put call ratio, even though that wasn't updated, it's probably a fair bet to say that we're still going up with that, which is negative. The parabolic SAR is negative. The bullish percent index is below 70 and declining. And the bullish percent index for the NASDAQ 100 has dropped back below 50. The check-in money flow and the check-in oscillator are negative. The ultimate oscillator and the Coppet curve, they are both negative. The vortex, this is a new one. This is now crossed over negative. And our S&P 500 oscillators are declining after giving us extreme readings for a long time. And we still have the small caps, which are showing a negative divergence, as well as discretionary versus staples when we look at that ratio and the transports from the Dow and S&P, and the momentum for the NASDAQ 100 is negative, positive. For right now, the NASDAQ 100 is still above its 50-period simple moving average. Can that hold? Growth-to-value ratios may be showing some improvement. Like I said, they were both down, but growth was down less. Large-cap growth is holding up for right now when you look at that bigger picture chart. And the financial sector, even though it declined, is still positive. So our conclusion, we are positive, but in the negative, or in the short term, we're now negative. We're showing weakness in the intermediate term, and we're already becoming oversold with some of our indications. Now, it could take some time for this to actually play out. We are showing weakness, and we're turning more negative in the intermediate term, and we're still above that 51.10 to 51.11 level. And that's what I'm watching more for the intermediate term, where we're still positive in the long term. And we have our longer term moving averages that are still looking extreme. Thank you. I really hope you found this helpful. I'm going to look through the charts and see if I'll update the what to watch video. And if I'm able to do that, I will possibly look at doing that. So have a great day and I will talk to you in the next video.